Nikki Balasubramanian. Nikki is one of the core developers for the data curation project uh, at RMIT and he works, uh, also works in other e-research projects in the RMIT e-research office. He completed his PhD in sensor networks at INEXT, uh, the University of Technology at Sydney under, uh, Sydney, under Professor uh, Hoang. He also completed his master's and postgraduate diploma in networking from Uni of Sydney and University of New South Wales, respectively. So he's done the tour of many of the universities in Sydney. Uh, he worked as a research assistant in the Advanced Networking Lab at Uni of Sydney. His research interests include uh, e-research, sensor and wireless ad hoc, net, ad hoc networks, quality of service, web, web adaptation techniques for mobile devices and healthcare monitoring. Uh, but today Venki is going to talk to us about uh, data capture from high performance computing facilities uh, case study. Thank you, and thanks for getting my last name correctly. <laughs> um, yes, what we learned is that the researchers want to use the tools, the research tools, okay, to be in line with their workflow. And the last thing they want is that to use an yet another tool for curating the research data. Having said that, okay, we thoroughly enjoyed in working in this project along with the other project as well. The uncertainties and the arguments we had, okay, it was a new experience indeed. Well, I'm Venki Balasubramanian, and I'm here to present okay, our experience in developing one of our e-research projects, data capture from, the curation or capture from okay, high-performance computing facilities, okay, which happens at e-research office at RMIT University and is funded by Australian National Data Services ANS. Let's start with a brief discussion about the project details. The aim of the project is to harvest the data from high performance computing to facilitate the researchers from the field of applied physics. The data generated from the four simulation packages, WAPS, Crystal, CSD, and GALP, okay, they run at the different facilities. Uh, one is the NCI, which is in Canberra, the other one is VPAC in Melbourne, and one in the RMIT. And we have a team of six people. Okay, we are we work under Professor Haynes, okay, who is the e-research office director, and our project manager is Ravi. And we have a two co-developers, one being myself, the other is Dr. Ian Thomas. And we have a two domain users as well. Okay, one is Professor Salvi, is also a co-director of our e-research office, and the other is part-time PhD student, Daniel. We often meet him to get uh, domain-specific data from him. The main goal of our abstract and uh, Apparently, uh, this presentation is to share our development experience and also propagate the uh, projects what we do at e-research RMIT office. By doing so, we believe that the developers can get some uh, the queries answered and also they get some ideas from our approach and vice versa. To start our experience, I will I showed an, an architecture, and of course I'll be explaining this architecture down the line, okay, not in very much in technical details, but okay, in an overall okay, considering the diversity of the audience. And in the course of the development, okay, we encountered a lot of challenges. Okay, instead of um, numbering the challenges one, two, three, we tried to segregate those challenges into a broader categories. Uh, so five different categories, as you see, okay, systems of systems, reusability, domain users, interoperability, and the uh, security. So let's start with the systems of systems. The significant part of the uh, DC application is to extract the data sets and, of course, extract the metadata as well, okay, from the data sets, okay, from the existing systems. During the initial design of our project, okay, we came up with five different components for a DC application. Okay, these components are systems by themselves. So the initial challenge is to find out the functionalities of this system. Okay, what we found is that okay, we don't have a total control over the systems, okay, and hence the reliability and the availability of the system is not known fully. And, uh, and uh, in research, okay, most of the time, okay, 
these systems okay are uh, domain specific and have a limited control over the extended okay, legacy systems in terms of reliability and availability and uh, often okay we have a relationship with these facilities okay, in an ad hoc mode and uh, hence okay, we are not able to guarantee an 100% reliability or we are certain we are not certain with the reliability of the whole e research tool which we it develop because it recently it happened that okay one of the facilities we are in the final stages of the projects we want to test the systems again okay, in the last few month okay, last month and we had an experience that okay, one of the facilities was down and we were not able to uh, test the system in the real time environment okay, for which okay, we didn't have any control due to this nature okay the interoperability is an another issue because of the data transfer between so these are the five components so it starts with the HPC cluster which I can show it in the next slide The interoperability is a key challenge to make these systems work together, okay, because all these systems are heterogeneous. They are not only differ in their processing power, but also the uh, software they use in. For instance, okay, we are working heavily on the Unix-based cluster, okay, which is altogether different from our DC application. And uh, we talk with the hands, okay, which is a web service application, and that's another two component called uh, institutional repository that is not yet decided okay what system it should be and the next one is the third party provider okay, for a persistent identifier and and basically what happened was okay in this okay you know in order to transfer the data from one component to the another we have to build an, a number of adapters to suit the requirement for instance okay we build an adapter to transfer the uh, data sets okay from the unix based cluster to our web developed dc web application and we have to build an ad another adapter to transfer the metadata registry to the ANS okay, as per the requirement okay, because we are under the ANS contract and we have to, uh, before the contract ends, we have to curate okay, some 20 to 30 um, uh, sets of data okay, for our, uh, our research data repositories. And we have to, we are in the process of developing another adapter okay, for persistent identifier and uh, we are in the process of doing that one. <coughs> And reusability is always a welcome term, okay, for in e-research development. Okay. Basically, it not only saves the development cost, but also saves a lot of time uh, in testing those facilities okay, in the similar environment. Uh, the main goal of the DC application is to extract the data, to pull the data from the facilities, and to extract the metadata from the data sets, and to save the metadata in the institutional repository. We found that, okay, uh, a TARIS, okay, an application, open source application, is just most of these functionalities, so we tried to adopt that one, okay. Luckily, we had a core developer, okay, who really live and bit in TARIS, so it was very much helpful, and thanks to the TARIS developer as well. And it's an open source metadata repository which solves, okay, most of our uh, extraction issues. Uh, however, okay, we have to build uh, extended functionalities for this TARIS, uh, three different functionalities, okay, one is to pull the data from the cluster to the web, web application and the second one is to transfer the data from the DC uh, web application to the ANS. And of course it is not uh, useful okay, as such. It means that okay, we have to do a couple of three or four modifications and we have to develop okay, uh, different functionalities to suit our requirement. And Fourth one is the security. Security is always an issue in, in any application that involves data transfer between the systems. As such, okay, we have a three major transfer of data okay, in the DC application, as, as you can see. However, okay, these three major, major transfer of data can be achieved okay, by using okay, any of the uh, Federation, Australian National Federation and other federal service for uh, a seamless authentication and authorization, but the real challenge is to find out who is the reliable researchers who can access this data and also has the ability to publish this data. Okay. For instance, we are working closely with the RMIT researchers again. We have to create a different profile for those researchers who are working from as a collaborator from other universities. Okay. Those things have to be uh, solved okay, in solving the security issues. And the last one, is the uh, domain users 
And yes, as I said, okay, the project would not be successful okay, without the collaboration of the researchers. Okay, and the researchers involved okay, all through the project, and it was very much helpful. And it is we are certain that it is crucial for any successful development of e research tool. They were involved in initially to find out okay, what are the data systems has to be curated. And uh, secondly, they were involved in uh, extracting the metadata and what are the required metadata has to be extracted from the data sets. And uh, thirdly, they are even even help, uh, help us to uh, knock down the technologies which we can use in developing the DC application. And finally, they were giving the feedback okay, all through our development, which was very useful. And finally, I give you hope that we can make them happy. And I, since this project is not yet completed, we are in the last few stages of the project. And I tried to give a short demo, as it said, just a minute demo, de demo to show that okay, what we have done. Okay, once you can see the, basically the scripts runs over here. It's a Unix script. The user, that is the researcher, has to use only that script in curating the data. It's just a click of the button. Once you have done that one, they select the files and it, the data goes all the way to our uh, DC application where this is curated automatically behind the scenes. And the data has been stored okay, in the data repository. As of now, it is not as implemented. It stores in the uh, TARDIS uh, data store and it creates the metadata automatically and it create, and makes the RIPCS ready for harvesting purpose. Mm. All right, unfortunately it's not running for some reason. All right, okay, still, okay, you can get to see the demo, or if you are interested in the live demo, okay, we are running the booth over here in near Versi, okay. I'm very happy to share, okay, our ideas and what are the code scores, okay, we are using it uh, in developing this project. And finally, what we learned, okay, e-research, okay, so of the researchers and for the researchers and by the researchers, and uh, I expect that, okay, I will get at least three questions for the first two phrases, but the last one, and I believe that, okay, instead of being a, just a developer in developing a research tool, okay, being an, a, a researcher, I'll be in a better position to understand the researchers need, okay, like, okay, sometimes they don't want to give out their data for curation purpose, just for to safeguard their grants applications. And uh, sometimes, okay, they don't want to use an, a hi-fi technology because they really want to go out of their way to curate the data. Because being a researcher myself, okay, I, when I developed my own application for my PhD four years before, I was so reluctant to change the workflow because I was very much interested in the data rather than the software which I used. And most researchers, they think that data creation is, not, is just a, a backup. But at the same time, the same researchers feel that a, a, a scientific research publication with the ready-made experimental data will be a boon for the researchers. And we believe that, okay, in the time to come, okay, once the researchers are happening to see the publications along with the experimental data, will be more than happy to use the e-research tools without any issues. In the last few points, to conclude it, okay, the lack of knowledge on the e-researchers by some academics and researchers, as I said, because they think that e-research tool is just for backing up their data. And while we are working in the project, okay, it is always necessary to get the researchers collaborate with the project as much as possible because in DC application, we found that okay, most of the researchers are very much fluent in using the Unix operating system. So we designed the technology in such a way that they should not be outlined okay, from their workflow. The last few points to conclude, okay, researchers just need a good enough solutions. And it's a good and a bad in the sense that it is good that you make the researchers happy and the bad is sometimes you get to compromise on the technology which you use. Thank you. Yep. Now, my understanding is that with the demand research data Australia wants information about data collection. Now, how does that work? Where, where do you, what do you say, at what level of granularity do you say this is a collection versus if you're an individual data point for a particular run, or do you say it's a collection? Yes, unfortunately, the, uh, 
the demo is not working, but I could have explained it better with the demo, but still I can explain. Basically, we, we collect the data from the cluster by using a script and we create the data by using the a TARDIS. So once we are collecting it, we collect the high level metadata from the cluster. We don't do much of processing in the cluster and all the data are stored in the uh, repository. And we extract the metadata which is required by the ants in the TARDIS as an adapter, as I explained in this, this adapter. And basically it is kept okay in the TARDIS for harvesting. And we extract two types of metadata. One is for the ants and the other one is for the, specifically for the domain users. And the domain users metadata basically stays in the TARDIS itself. And uh, RIF CS, which is what the ants made it okay in terms of metadata, which stays here and the, it can be harvested from the ants at any time. Thanks for that. But still, you can, if you want to see the demo, okay, we are ready with the live demo. We'll be able to give it, okay, we're running a booth near Versi and its Department of Business and Innovation. Thanks. If you really think we have to reuse someone's field then to come into the generator with their stuff, um, how is that catch It's pretty easy. It's pretty, can be done okay very easily as far as I know because I was pretty much involved in writing the scripts. Okay, we, we are bothered about the files you want. Okay, that is the name of the data sets you want. What I learned okay upon working in this one okay for simulation packages, most of the files these simulation packages runs and produces the data whose name is going to be the same thing and the researchers can curate this data. So we have the set of the names for each and every simulation packages and the user runs the simulation pa packages automatically. Does it answer your question? No, I 